Even in the dead of winter, the first day of February, we were reminded today that the Canadian media, when it comes to soccer, never sleeps. The supporters' energy was charged up today, and it's not because it's my birthday. It was John Herdman, indirectly, who stole the spotlight on my special day, here to make sense of it all, or at least try to. There's a lot to unpack here, as Oliver Platt and Alexander Gange Ruzik. If you're just turning on your phone today, or you live under a rock, either things are okay. Let me help you and go through what happened happened today because it was a wild start to the month of February. A tweet got the Canadian soccer universe talking. This is Andrew Gordy of News Hub New Zealand with an exclusive article he said on News Hub. Canada men's coach John Herdman has agreed to be the next coach of the All Whites. That sent the world ablaze, as you might expect. Just before Veb Priestman spoke to the media at 2 p.m. Eastern time, Canada Soccer did put out this statement where John Herdman said, success at this level will always invite opportunity. I've received several offers in recent months, all of which I have turned down, including an offer from New Zealand football. To our Canadian players and fans, I want to reiterate my commitment to Canada Soccer and the growing of this program. At the World Cup in Qatar, men show the world that they belong at that level. I'm not going anywhere, Wolf of Wall Street style. I just added that for context. We still have a job to do, and that objective is to take this team to the next level in 2026. And exhale. Everyone realized that it was nothing but a rumor, but it doesn't make today any less weird, Oliver. What did you make from the hecticness that was this morning? Well, obviously, we talked this out this morning in, in the video we did earlier. And I, I think, like, you, you were kind of trying to make sense of it because it didn't really make sense to me. I Like I, I said in that video, from a footballing perspective, it, it doesn't add up, I don't think, that John Herdman would leave Canada and, and what you've got ahead of you over the next three and a half years leading into our home World Cup for New Zealand. With all due respect to New Zealand, it's it's a weaker squad. It's it's not as appetizing an opportunity, I don't think personally, or anywhere close um, over this next World Cup cycle. So you, you, you were trying to kind of figure out what was going on, what the reasoning was, maybe even, you know, pr kind of come up with reasons that weren't there as to why someone might make this move. But yeah, it, it never quite smelt right. Um, so I, I don't know what's happened here. And obviously, we'll over the next couple of days, I'm sure, pick pick apart, you know, what we think has happened and what might have happened. Um, but it always seemed like a very strange kind of move for John Herdman to make coming out of the 2022 World Cup. So I wasn't totally surprised, to be honest, as, as much as it's happened very quickly, um, that he's, he's kind of put that to bed. Alex? Yeah, it feels like one that just never really added up when you read the, the, the you know, the report. You see the headline, of course, the headline grabbed a lot of attention. I think it's something that people never really fully grasped the contents of what was also contained in the article, which never maybe helped with some of the, the rumors and the, you know, all the, the, the speculation that went about, you know, it was a, a fancy way of saying, okay, there's been talks, there's been calls, but I'm sure, you know, that's just, again, this is, that's what goes on at this level. But you, of course, when you see a report like that, you do want to look like, is it possible? Could John Herdman very well leave? It is the start of a new world cup cycle. Could he have a new challenge ahead of him? But just looking at what, you know, like Ollie mentions, the level of New Zealand, you look at the fact that you'd be leaving a team that's guaranteed to be at the 2026 Men's World Cup for a team that, yes, has a great chance in the expanded format, but still a team that's not guaranteed to be there. You're going from Alfonso Davies and Jonathan David to the likes of Chris Wood. It just didn't really clock up on a lot of those, you know, senses that you feel like for a guy like John Herdman. Yes, he loves a project, but there's a lot of unfinished business here in Canada. And then you look at what New Zealand could offer. It just didn't feel like a, a project that he'd embark on at this this stage. And what comes out of that in the duration of time before a rumor like that, some silence from Canada Soccer, who I'm sure were just trying to figure out on their own what was going on, trying to get a hold of John and figure out how they were going to address it, which they obviously did. Um, but you get a motion from supporters. You get a motion from journalists who, like Ollie said, are trying to make sense of it. We know John Herdman is not going to be the coach of the men's national team here in Canada forever. At some point, he will either retire if he stays here for long enough or he'll move on to another opportunity. But Alex, I think what frustrated, I guess, a lot of supporters in that time frame was, as you guys point out, it doesn't seem like a step up. He'd be going back in his career to New Zealand, which he obviously has ties with, to a new project. Is it safe to say Canadian soccer supporters would be more accepting of a potential departure if it was for a big club job or a different opportunity that was more of a step up than a lateral or a step back, depending on how you look at it? 
Yeah, I mean, look, in terms of John Herdman, he's someone who's been around in Canada for so long. He's someone that, given what he's given to the sport in the country, look on the both women's and men's side, he's earned the right that at any point he could very well leave. Again, he's, he's done a lot for the program, but you also are looking, you'd expect him to make a move up. This is someone who's con continually, you know, he's been pushing. He's maybe he wants to go to a club job. Maybe he wants to head home to, you know, the English job of, you know, his home home country to, to maybe, you know, turn some heads there and, and, and get people back for maybe things that happened 20, 30 years ago. And what he said about coaching there, I don't think anyone would fault him for, for a move like that. I think, again, he's earned that right. Supporters are very understanding, you know, seeing a lot of the reaction online. Supporters weren't necessarily mad that he'd be leaving. Again, it's something where, the, you know, of course, there's, you know, a segment of, of, of fans that think that Canada is also ready for the next step themselves. And that's a whole other discussion to have. But in terms of John Herdman specifically, he, he's at a point of his career where if it happens, and it could very well happen, because again, he's not going to be here forever, like Adam mentions, uh, he's, he's earned that right. And I wouldn't be surprised uh, to maybe see that if he continues to, to get good performances. Yeah, I think that that's an important point is that it, it could happen. Um, and it could happen over the next three and a half years. And so I, I think you, you've got to think about that as a, as a federation. How, how do you address this now? Because, okay, it's great that he's staying. He's, you know, made a commitment to, to be here through the 2026 World Cup. He's under contract, obviously. You know, they've put out the statements from, from the CSA saying they expect him to see through that contract. But there's, there's still going to be interest that comes over the next few years if John Herdman continues to have the success that he's had with Canada in, in these upcoming tournaments, these upcoming games. So how, how do you kind of safeguard against that? Because for me, if, if you're the CSA, you really don't want to be sleepwalking into 2024, 2025 with this lingering possibility before this World Cup and in a much closer time frame before the World Cup than, than today that John Herdman might get an opportunity somewhere else, that he might see a job that he that he does think is a step up, or maybe it's an opportunity to go into the club game that he takes on. Like as, as much as I appreciate that he's making that commitment and saying that he wants to see it through for 2026, he's also a human being with, you know, his own career to take care of, his own financial considerations to take care of. You can't totally eliminate that possibility. So how, how do you, as, as a federation now, my question is, safeguard against that as much as possible to make sure that there's no pre-World Cup disaster here. Because I do think you have to at least be prepared, have a plan B at some point. Um, so that'll be the interesting thing to watch for me now is, is what happens out of this. Because I don't think it can just be all's well again, move on <laughs> as if this never happens. Like you have to think about what, what if this does happen right before the Copper America or right before the 2026 World Cup and, and it could end up differently? I, I think that's something that, that has to be on their minds now coming out of this. You know, it's always a bizarre day when Ancelotti is tweeting or is trending, excuse me, in Canada. And look, I think that's part of the conversation to be had when the time comes. John Herdman, again, will leave at some point. Who replaces him is, is a whole other conversation for a different day. But Ollie, just to follow up on that, what is in front of John and this program sort of expectation wise between now and 26, because we get that commitment that he wants to see it through and what an opportunity it will be for whoever is at the helm of Canada at the next world cup that we are co-hosting, but Copa America, gold cup, everything else to come. Is there going to be more spotlight on this program? It's not like they're just going to fall asleep for four years until the next world cup rolls around. Yeah. I think Jordan Wilson said this very well on, on our show earlier. Like this to me is the exciting part now, like as brilliant as the world cup was and qualifying for the world cup in 2022, like the next three and a half years are like, I think this is the real opportunity for Canada to, to really put itself on the map in the world and to, to, to take you know, to get to the level that they've all been talking about taking that next step. Like they have the opportunity now to go to a Copa America, a massive tournament, probably the biggest tournament when you think about, especially if Messi's still there playing. Um, mm -hmm. Until that next World Cup, there's there's no tournament that will get more attention, more eyeballs than that. Then you have the opportunity to co-host the, the World Cup in 2026. You have your young squads all coming into the prime of their careers while this is happening. Like, I, I think there's tremendous opportunity at the Copa America, at the World Cup, at Gold Cups, in Nations League, for Canada to compete you know, with the best teams in the world on, on the one hand in those bigger tournaments and then also in some of the CONCACAF tournaments to compete to win silverware here. Like that, that's a real possibility for Canada in the, in the next few years. So um, again, it just kind of highlights why I would have been really surprised if he'd, you know, left all, all of that aside and, and, and decided this was the right time to move on 
for the New Zealand job. If there's a different job, if there's a club job or a higher national team job, okay, maybe you start to make sense of it a bit more. But with what you have with Canada over the next few years, to go to New Zealand to me was a move that, that didn't make sense again on a footballing level. Alex, I want to give you the last word on this. And you think with those tournaments that are coming up for Canada here and the World Cup, I don't think anyone wants to diminish the accomplishment that Canada had in getting to the World Cup. But it's also hard to not forget that they probably fell below some of the expectations that they had set for themselves in terms of results at the World Cup. So if a move was to come, it feels like for the players, for John Herdman, there is more to accomplish. There is still an opportunity for those collective stocks to rise with these upcoming events, fixtures, competitions, etc., for everyone to boost their stock and profile on the world stage. Yeah, I think for, for John Herdman, it feels like there's a lot of unfinished business. And maybe you can also add it to the, you know, the weirdness of these rumors. It's not very, it doesn't feel very John Herdman to leave after such the low of the World Cup where you go out winless. People are wondering, okay, did this Canadian team, you know, peak too early? Are they, you know, are they pretenders on the world stage, especially when you have that opportunity in three and a half years time now? So like Ollie says, this is the exciting time. I think if 2022 is the spark, you know, is the moment where, oh, okay, this, this team can play, the players can put it together over a qualifying run, can make it to the big stage. Well, now you got to take that spark and, and, and turn it into a fire. And I think there's so much unfinished business you, yes you made a world cup and now you want to make it to a knockout rounds of a world cup you want to win a trophy because it's been you know 23 plus years and, and counting since you last won a trophy you've got the nations league you've got gold cup as two prime opportunities you can go to a Copa america and show that you know in a tournament with the world champions and some of the other top teams in the world you can go play and and, and really you know go into a tough tournament like that and maybe progress to the knockout rounds there and maybe make a bit of a surprise run and just all do this while you know some of your players like alfonso davies is still only going to be 25 at the next world cup this isn't one where it's a last dance with the, an old generation this is a generation that is very much you know up and coming a lot of players tay john buchanan as well still super young jonathan david uh stefan ustakio is still going to be not even 30 by the time that world cup rolls around it feels like if you know we're going to talk about john herdman's departure we know that no matter when it is he's someone that will want to leave on a high of winning some trophy or you know doing well in a world cup and saying okay the, he, he always says leaving a shirt in a better place uh than than when he got it i, I feel like it, because of that you know he's going to want to go and take care of some of that unfinished business and at least leave looking back and hey yeah, we made a World Cup for the first time in, in 30 plus years. We, we won a trophy for the first time in 20 plus years. Uh, we did all these things. And instead of leaving uh, the way that this exit would have been seen, which obviously the perceptions would have been a lot worse than uh, such a departure. Well, Oliver Platt, Alex Gange, Ruzik, thank you for helping us make sense of a wild day. Just because it's February doesn't mean there isn't things to talk about, especially with the She Believes Cup just around the corner in a couple of weeks. So despite it being almost insufferable outside, he says, after coming back from a month-long vacation, it is still a very exciting time for Canadian soccer. More on One Soccer today, tomorrow with Oliver Platt, Andy Petrillo, and Jordan Wilson. This conversation will continue, but boys, appreciate you today.